Can Islam be integrated in France? Government ministers are speaking to Muslim leaders about conforming to the secular system. But is that possible? And how are politics contributing to the debate over the future of Islam in France? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme in Doha. I'm Adrian Finnegan. Now, for the past year, French society has been consumed by a debate over Islam. Hundreds of French people have been killed in ISIL attacks within the past two years, and many of France's five million Muslims say that's led to an atmosphere of Islamophobia. They say the backlash is evident in the bikini ban, which forbade Muslim women from wearing their version of swimwear on several French beaches. Other Muslims say that they've been refused service in French restaurants and coffee shops. The issue is also high on the agenda in the run-up to the presidential election next year. Interior Minister Bernard Kazanov has been meeting Muslim leaders and civil groups and MPs about so-called French Islam, a version of the religion meant to reconcile Muslim and French values. The discussion is aimed at better understanding Muslim communities and preventing more religiously motivated violence. Well, Prime Minister Manuel Valls has previously mentioned the idea of French Islam. In a newspaper article, he wrote, Our country must prove to the whole world that Islam is compatible with democracy. We must create a balance with the Islam of France. If Islam doesn't help the Republic fight those who undermine public freedoms, then it will be increasingly hard for the Republic to guarantee its freedom of worship. But the Interior Minister is warning that balancing Islam with French ideas on secularism could be tricky. The implementation of secularism and the option of adopting such decrees must not lead to stigmatization or the creation of hostility between French people. Well, the policy of secularism that uh, Kazanov mentioned there is known as laicity. Legalized in 1905, it's a strict form of secularism that aims to keep religion out of public life. And it's been the basis of previous French bans. In 2004, the French government banned students in public schools from wearing what it considers conspicuous religious symbols. They include Muslim headscarves, Jewish hats and oversized crucifixes. And the Muslim face covering veil called the niqab was banned from all public spaces in France six years ago. As always, lots to discuss on the programme for today. Let's bring in our guests. They're all in Paris. Renaud Girard is the chief foreign correspondent at uh, Le Figaro. Samia Hathroubi is uh, French Muslim human rights activist. And Francois Germain, research fellow at the Institute for Sustainable Development and International Relations. Welcome to you all. Renaud, um, let's start with you. What do you make of Prime Minister Manuel Valls' proposed pact to redefine Islam's role in France, to rebuild French Islam? You know, it's a tradition that uh, the um, Minister of Interior in France is also the Minister of Religions, if you like. We call that le Ministre des Cultes. So uh, it's... Uh, um, uh, and Manuel Valls was a Minister in, of Interior before becoming Prime Minister, so he knows the matter quite well. And yes, it seems that there is a necessity to have um, Islam de France, a French Islam, so that, that Wahhabism, uh, like, you know, radical Islam, this uh, school, you know, there are like four judicial schools in Islam, and that the most extreme one, the more backwards, the Ambalit, Hambalit, should not uh, have a say in France. And, um, uh, I think that it's um, a, a right um, uh, in innovation, a right intervention, a right move by uh, Prime Minister Manuel Valls. Samia, what do you make of it? Is it possible to integrate Muslim and French values? I mean, can you have a French version of Islam? Uh, I think that we are already witnessing Islam in France or French Islam, whatever you call it, whatever you define it. You have hundreds of thousands, millions of Muslims who are living their faith peacefully in this country, uh, which gives you the sense that Islam and France are compatible. Uh, 
I, I would like to highlight before starting the discussion about this foundation of Islam, which has been, let's say, refounded because it was already in, in the, uh, it was already made by Dominique de Villepin, that this foundation comes in a very, uh, in the worst time, let's say, we had, uh, we had this summer uh, the Burkini ban, we had polemics and we had hundreds of quotations from the Prime Minister himself targeting, stigmatizing Muslims. So how do you want Muslim today, French Muslim, to be completely positive towards this foundation of Islam when the first, um, the first actor, Prime Minister himself, uh, keeps targeting us? But Sammy, uh, uh, talking about the, the burkini ban, I don't want to get too bogged down in, in, in both the, the burkini and the niqab ban, but um, isn't it that many on the, the, the French left in particular regard that ban as, as, as a need to protect women from what they see as male-imposed uh, doctrines? They're willing to put it even before liberty. I mean, even without digging into this burkini ban, we have seen since almost three years, every day, issue concerning Islam. We had issues about uh, what kids are eating in schools. We had issues about equality between men and women. We had issues about what uh, the right wing called occupation of streets. Uh, we have on a daily basis debates on Islam and you can understand and I can understand why Muslim and myself are very reluctant or looking at this foundation of Islam has um, well, with caution, and, and we're not really reluctant to uh, take part of it. Okay, let's 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 bring in uh, Francois. Then, um, what do you make of this? Particularly uh, when you look at the the, the nitty gritty. I mean, the, the the proposal at the moment is pretty vague, but there is a proposal to to slash foreign funding for mosques and to train imams domestically to ensure that sermons are compatible with democracy. What do you make of that? Well, uh, I'm concerned that we're about to give Daesh exactly what it wants, that is, that we are slowly uh, destroying the common space where atheists, Christians and Muslims can live together in France, and any non-issue, any small incident becomes a national controversy because of the stupidity, ignorance and exaggerations of many members of the French political elite. So in that regard, uh, certainly the foundation is an attempt by the government to calm down everyone and to try to better organize uh, French Islam. The problem is that today many, including some presidential candidates in the primaries on the right or on the left, see any presence of Islam in the public space as a provocation to the values of the Republic. Um, and certainly cutting funding uh, from abroad is a good idea. Better uh, integrating imams and raising funds uh, for Islam in France is in abstracto a good idea, but I'm afraid that the way uh, it is framed and the moment when it comes uh, it is not the right time and not the right way to proceed, especially if you appoint as head of this foundation a non-Muslim, an old politician who's been a, a leading thinker of secularism. And the problem is that secularism today is increasingly becoming a refuge uh, for plain racism and xenophobia. Okay, I want to put that point to, to Renault in just a moment, but first, Samia, let, let, as, as, a, as a Muslim, how do you feel about that, uh, uh, about the fact that the government is proposing to, to train imams? Yeah. So, well, in this foundation of Islam, you have two bodies, and, and, and I'm first concerned about the fact that in the first body, in the board, you have among 11 people, the president himself is not Muslim, uh, he has been a Minister of Interior, and you have among those 11 people, seven people coming from government, Minister of Education, Minister of Culture. So I'm wondering what it will be, uh, and I'm really, really concerned about this one. The second is cultural, like trainings of Imam. I do believe um, that it's a good thing that finally we have training in France, and I was, and I keep saying it. I've, I've, I've told this in, in many conferences that it's a shame today, after hundreds of years of Muslim being present in this country, that we need to bring people from Morocco, Algeria, Turkey, and other part of the world has imam. And I think that France hits him, itself has um, a responsibility uh, on this issue. We have thought that bringing uh, imams from abroad was a, good, was a good way to deal with Islam. I think this needs to hand up, this uh, 
uh, this way of, of treating and managing Islam in France needs to change. And if the foundation of Islam can do that, it will be, in a way or another, a good, a positive uh, achievement. Uh, Renaud, picking up on, uh, on what Francois was saying, um, uh, what do you make of, of the, the apparent assumption that this can only be done through state intervention, that, that while French Muslims, as, as, as the Prime Minister uh, has written, must assume an enormous responsibility in this rebuilding, uh, that it should be done un under the aegis of the government? Yeah, because you need, for instance, uh, training. There are like some ideas that are spread by some imams, especially this f coming from the school, from the Wabi school or the Ambalid school, if you like. This, this is the this like, is the terrible like, um, this is the imams. terrible poison that, that 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 he says is spreading through the country. Is is that right? The uh, the for instance, the training you should train imams, for instance. There is one idea, for instance, that would not be acceptable in France. It would be that the testimony of a woman would be half the value of the testimony of a man. I mean, um, in this country, it's very important, and we have fought for that, that uh, you have um, the same rights. We call that egalité, the same rights for men and women. So we cannot accept any people on the French territory uh, lecturing and teaching that the testimony of a woman should be half of that of a man. We cannot accept that. So this is f an example why, yes, uh, probably uh, imams have to be trained. Because the problem of the Sunni religion compared to the Shiite religion is that in Sunni you don't have a clergy, you don't have a hierarchy. You do not, you do, you, you, you uh, do not have a corpus of doctrine so, uh, but th th that you have in, in, in Shia um, uh, Islam. So, yes, I guess that it would be a right to have uh, the control of the government or what is taught uh, to the young, uh, for instance, to the young, uh, um, uh, 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 the young boys and, and girls um, learning uh, Islam. It, it's very difficult to ascertain. It's very difficult to ascertain just how many Muslims there are in France, particularly uh, uh, how many Sunni and how many Shia Muslims there are. But picking up on what you say, Renaud, uh, 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 is the French Republic and, and, and laicite, it, it, uh, are they intrinsically hostile, do you think, to Muslims? The French Republic has never been hostile. The French state, actually, has never been hostile to to Islam in general, if you remember, like, you know, um, in the uh, 16th century, um, the king of France, François Ier, was uh, Francis the I, who, of course, was a Catholic, um, had very good r uh, relations with, uh, with the uh, Ottomans, the, um, with, uh, with, with uh, Istanbul. And they were friends with uh, Mehmet Ali. And um, so, um, and then you had uh, in Egypt, for instance, uh, um, in, in, the, in the 19th century, Bonaparte was quite friendly to the Muslims, and, and, and the, 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 the ruler of Egypt in the beginning of 19th, uh, 19th century, Mehmet Ali, uh, was much influenced by French ideas, and they were very close relationship. But of course, France is in a favor of some kind of enlightened Islam, if you like, um, not any radical, not uh, uh, Islam that would accept criticism, um, in Islam that would accept interpretation of texts. This is very important. And it exists, for instance, in Shia Islam, uh, you have okay. different school of interpretation. And we think that the sacred text should be uh, uh, should be uh, interpreted and uh, and the right uh, in, 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 in a school okay. the uh, for us for French people there is a duty of criticism that should be taught uh, to children so this is okay. the kind 
of Islam that we want in France, and we have always have good have been good religions. Abdel Kader, who, who we fought Abdel Kader in Algeria, but then he 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 became a big friend of France. He was given the okay. Legion d'honneur. He was given a pension, and he protected the Christian in Ren in Syria Renaud. in 1860. So right, there uh, is no problem between France and Islam. Okay, Fra Francois, what do you what do you make of what you've just heard there? Oh, well, I think that there is no question that. Of course, freedom of religion was probably better guaranteed under Louis XIV and, and the Edict of Nantes. Uh, the problem is that today it becomes increasingly difficult for Muslims to practice uh, their religion in France, and there is a clear backlash and a clear hostility uh, towards Muslims. And for some members of the political elite, it seems that uh, a, a good Muslim in France is a Muslim who would denounce his religion or her religion, given that main, most of the backlash is directed against Muslim women. I think that French needs to come at peace with the idea that Islam is visible in the public space, that Islam is part of France, is a religion of France, and as long as France will not accept this, I'm afraid that Muslims won't be able uh, to coexist peacefully with atheists and Christians. And to me, this is also uh, a, a, an issue for France to look deeply uh, into itself and to stop seeing any presence of Islam in the public space, be it a burkini on a beach, for example, as a provocation towards the Republic. This is not what is intended to do. And as a matter of fact, any uh, further controversy on these non-issue will be absolutely counterproductive and will only increase radicalism and Salafism exactly the opposite of what these controversies are supposed to achieve. OK, Samia, if, even if a, a single government-funded institution could bring French Islam under, under one roof, so to speak, is, is it naive to assume that, that it could de-radicalise suburban youths? Is, isn't that just a convenient political diversion from the real issues, alienation, unemployment, poverty, failing schools, animosity? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me come back, <clears throat> if, if I may, uh, on, on what has been said previously by, by the first, uh, first person. Uh, um, well, this comparison between Sunni and Shia uh, and asking Sunni French, well, Muslim, French Muslims are, are in a great majority uh, Sunni, asking them to have a pope and to have a hierarchy is nonsense and pointless. Let me put it in this way. Uh, secondly, Asking, uh, asking Muslims to reform their own uh, religion is not the goal of this foundation. This foundation is to, to, to bring Muslim and the Republic to talk together, not to reform Islam. If Muslims do want to reform uh, the Sharia, the Fiqh, the, the, the law, they will do it on themselves and they don't, they don't have to wait for, for the government to do it. Uh, let me come back to another point. We have, we have seen that many Muslims are willing to enter this foundation. We have this, this op-ed written by 41 uh, Muslim people in France saying we take our responsibility. But I would like to hear it from the French politician on a daily basis. Muslims are being discriminated against in restaurants. Muslims are being discriminated against in employment. When you, your name is Mohammed, you have less than chance to have an interview. So let's talk about real issues on a daily basis. People are stigmatized because of their name, because of their belief. So we should hold our responsibility to tackle radicalization or to tackle issue concerning Islam. But I would like the government, when he's doing this foundation of Islam, to tackle the real issues on a daily basis that Muslims are, uh, are, are, are living on a daily basis. All right, uh, Renaud, what, what do you make of, of, of what you heard there? To what extent are France's problems do you not, not to the integration of Muslims into French society, but with the, the, the philosophy of the Republic, of, of, of laicity? I don't think that there is a link between poverty and radicalism. I mean, uh, in uh, the beginning of the uh, 20th century, you had a lot of poor people, like poor Jews coming from Ukraine or Poland, poor Italians, poor Spanish coming to France. And there was no religious radicalization. We didn't have, we, we had never a problem of, you know, um, uh, poor Jews um, uh, putting bombs in the street because uh, they were poor or unemployed or whatever. And I don't think there is a link between um, your social status 
and you extreme. I mean, uh, Osama bin Laden was from a rich family, and um, the uh, author of uh, the 11th of September were from middle class. So I don't believe at all that there is a link between. Um, but there is also uh, this, uh, this, you know, this idea of France, and France is here. So it's why I, I, I don't agree at all with what uh, Francois said. I think that uh, to put a burkini on um, on a beach uh, in France is uh, is an offence. Is uh, is as 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 much an offence as if I would pretend to take uh, my wife or my girlfriend to Mecca and to ask her to to wear a mini skirt. You have to respect uh, the culture of the country where you want to live. That you want to be a host of this of this of this. Uh, uh, country, and I think that uh, um, if you don't like France, if, if, if you don't like French um, values, especially the equality between men and women, if you don't like that, I mean, nobody uh, forces you, you right. to, uh, to, uh, to live in, in France. You can go and live in Saudi Arabia. Okay, okay. You, you know that very well. I mean, we need to understand that whether or not we like the Burkini. Wearing the burkini on a beach is a fundamental freedom. So one might not like it, but French women and Muslim women have the right to wear this on a beach. And France's highest administrative tribunal, the Conseil d'État, has recently ruled out these bans on the burkini and has reinstated that any attack on the Burkini would okay. be an attack on the fundamental values Fr and liberties of the Republic. Francois, in the US, religious groups have traditionally been seen as defenders of the individual against intrusion by the state. But in France, it's, it's different. There, the state sees itself as, as the protector of the individual against pressure from religious groups. Is that difference, do you think, at the root of France's attitude to Islam? Yep. Probably the role of the state is understood differently, and I would say it's fair enough to say that the role of the state in the U.S. is conceived in a much more liberal way, a non-interventionist way. Uh, this being said, there is a constitution, there is a convention on human rights, and it seems to me that uh, the state is just trying too much to intervene in private affairs, and that the reality of this is that uh, it just seeks to discriminate and stigmatize uh, Muslims. Sami, I could see you shaking your head in despair there. Yeah, it's, it's exactly, I, I do believe the same. It's very ironic that people are talking about equality between men and women in this country, stigmatizing or highlighting the case of Burkini, when they are very silent when it comes to equality in politics, when it comes to equality in, 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 the, in, the, in the market. None of those persons are speaking out for women's rights only when it targets one community and one religion. And, and this irony is, so, sounds hypocritical and everybody knows it. The Burkini is a right, everyone has the right to go and come as she or he wants in this country. And, and saying that those people, if they don't uh, agree with French values, and I would like this person to, to, uh, point light, to point out and to highlight those French values at least, uh, they should go back to their place or go back to another country. I would like to ask him, but where shall we go? We, we, we are born and raised in this country. We are part and parcel of the French, uh, of the French society. Okay. Uh, so S it seems pointless. We've been bring, bringing, it, bringing it back, Samia, bringing it back to... This has never been... This book in here has never Rana, been... Rana, we haven't got, we haven't got time. It has I, never been uh, in Islam. I mean, uh, I've, been, uh, I've been in Cairo in Algiers, in Tripoli, in the 60s and the 70s, um, and a woman were on the right. beach totally normally. Okay, they didn't okay. wear burkini. Burkini is something so, ideological, look, I, I, which comes from the Wahhabism. <laughs> yeah. And we cannot accept Wahhabism in France. This is, this is the point. I mean, we cannot accept okay. a religion that would be uh, that backwards. We cannot accept that, and we will not accept that in France. I'm, I'm afraid. You I'm have afraid. To understand it. I'm afraid, Samia, we are right out of time. I, I, I desperately wanted to give you the right of reply there, but we're we're, we're out of time. Uh, we'll revisit this issue, I'm sure, uh, in the future here on Inside Story. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Renaud Girard, Samia Hathroubi, and Francois Germain.
And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget you can see the program again at any time by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. I'll look forward to hearing what you have to say on this issue. Uh, you can also join the conversation on Twitter at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the whole team here in Doha, bye for now.